Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. Here's an absolutely fantastic looking radio from 1939. The case looks like marbled caramel ice cream, and it's in really nice condition. So let's see if this old radio receiver comes to life. I'm going to plug this into my current limited isolation transformer and variac supply. I don't want to plug this directly into a wall because I don't know what the internal condition of this radio is. So we'll see if it comes to life and if it plays, that's great. If it doesn't, we'll go inside and we'll make it work. And then in another video, we're going to completely restore this radio. So it should be a lot of fun. So let's see if it works. And if not, we'll troubleshoot it. So here we go. I'll plug this into the supply and I'm going to turn the supply on. Okay, so just put this like so. Usually there's a little lamp on the top of these. Let's see if it comes on. Ah, that is a good sign right there. Okay, so since this is a vacuum tube radio, it's going to take a few moments to warm up. I don't know if we can see any other tubes through this. Can we see anything glowing inside there? Hmm, not really. That's very well put together. Very well sealed up. Mm, it's making some noise. I don't know if you can hear that. Put my hand by the antenna on the back. Making some noise, but very distorted. I don't hear that. Let's see here. It's very distorted. It is trying to receive. So what I'm going to do is I'll grab my 369 antenna. Look at I can just grab this, and hold this close to it with the end shorted from the 369 antenna, and it's helping this receiver out already. So that's full volume and very distorted. Does it receive anything down here? That's pretty quiet. Let me put this closer to here. And that's pretty quiet at the bottom end of the dial. So it is really, really distorted. So I'm wondering if that's just overloading the receive here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I will couple in that little coil that will couple into the antenna of this radio receiver and I'll be able to move this back and forth. I should be able to vary the, the receive here. So let's see. Find something that's relatively strong. So it sounds like it's almost overloading. So that would indicate a problem possibly in the AVC line. And it's, the volume is very, very low. So yeah, it might even be a, a B plus issue, like a voltage issue inside. So anyways, 
what I'm going to do is disconnect this from the power supply right now. And I'm going to open this thing up, we'll take a look inside, and we'll try and find the parts that are causing the issue and just replace those parts uh, and see if we can bring this thing back to life just the way it is. Again, we're going to end up restoring this entire radio together down the road. And that won't be very far down the road. I'm pretty excited about this radio. It's a very nice looking radio. So I'll get some tools and I'll open this thing up. We'll take a look inside. All right, so we want to remove the chassis from this. So the very first thing to do is remove the two knobs, which I'm actually surprised that this one is still here because it sure came off of that tuning shaft very, very easily. So, so usually there's screws on the bottom, but in this case, there isn't. So these must be the screws holding it all together. So what we'll do is I'll grab a screwdriver from over here. And very, very loose. All right. The reason why I don't like to completely unscrew these with this is because there's a magnet in here and then it pulls the screw way up inside so loosen it off a few turns and away I go okay so that looks like the only screws let's see if this will come apart I'll just lay it on its back oh it is yeah Figured there might be some more screws in there but no it's doing pretty good Side of the case is in very nice condition. So I know these cases are pretty transparent, you know, light-wise anyways, you know, obviously not to see through, but you know, the light shines through this very nicely, I should say. It looks like somebody may have sprayed some silver paint up there to stop the light from shining through. I don't know if that's factory or not. Kind of interesting. Put this off to the side. Speaker looks to be in very nice condition. So no problems there, and the dial is nice. A little plastic that's on top is also very nice. Let's take a look on the upper side. All the antique dust is still there. So obviously hasn't been apart in a very, very long time. Looks to be in very nice condition. Definitely a nice restoration candidate. Antenna wire up here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the underside. What's going on on the bottom? This is where it gets interesting. Uh, it looks like there's a few components that have been replaced in here. This right about there and zoom on in. So what's surprising is there wasn't very much hum which means the filter capacitor must be working to some extent, which is kind of amazing in itself. So these capacitors are definitely not original, so these have been replaced at some time. And these are all original in here. Looks like it has roundies for resistors. So not the squared off end Allen Bradley type, which I would expect for something of this, you know, year. So these are the porous body resistors that let moisture in. Then, of course, they move in value quite a bit easier. So, all these ones right here. So, it is making noise. No oh, nice big soldering iron burn on that capacitor down there. So, it is making noise, which is a good thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a voltmeter. And I'll plug the thing back in. And I'm going to test some voltages in here. And let's see if we can narrow this down. See if we can find the issue in this radio receiver and make it work with just the bare minimum of components replaced. All right, let's find out why this radio receiver sounds so crackly and crunchy. So what I've done is I've trimmed the little string that holds this capacitor in place so I can just move this out of the way so I can get under here to do testing if I need to. So that's just one extra thing done. So what I'm going to do is Grab my meter here, I'll hold this orange button and turn it on to DC volts. That disables the power off. Remove this from the top, put that right there so we can see that very easily. 
Then what I'm going to do is take the negative lead of my meter here. I'm going to put a clip on it. So I'll just clip that on right now and show you. Put a clip on it like this. And I want to clip it to the ground of the radio. So that's this lead here. Very easy to find because it's the negative lead off the capacitor. So I'll just clip this on right here like that. Make sure it's not in the way of me testing anything. No, nope, that's good. I'm going to turn the radio receiver on now. I have to let it warm up because it has tubes. I also have the schematic here as well, which will make things kind of easy to follow. And the tube legend, where the tubes actually are, is right here in the case, which is kind of nice. So I can just follow that. So, first thing that I want to do is just test each side of this capacitor, very basic test, just to make sure that the B plus is there. So I'll test this one side of the cap. There's 84 volts there. Test the other side of the cap. There's 111 there. So it's all there. No problems with the B plus there. So now the next thing I want to do is test the plate voltage of the 35L6 because it's really grungy, right? Really grungy. So it sounds like it could be an audio issue or an AVC issue, something like that. So this is looking at the bottom of the tube socket. So this is pin 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So pin 1, 2, and 3. So pin 3 right here is the plate. So if I look at this tube here, and I go to pin 3, that's this pin right here. Make some connection here. There it is. So yeah, there's plate voltage there, and let's see if there's screen voltage. There is. So the screen is the next one up. So that's pin one, two, three, and four. So pin four is the screen and pin three is the plate. So both of them should have B plus on them. So next thing I want to do is test the plate of the 12 SQ7. Now the 12 SQ7 is this tube right on the end right here. And the plate attaches to this coupling capacitor. So this means that this is the plate right here. And there's 56 volts on it, so no problems right there. So I have plate voltage on the 12 SQ7. The 12 SK7 is center chassis right here. And pin 8 is the plate. And that would be the index there. So this is pin 8. No problems. So there's B plus on all of the tubes. And it's, you know, not extremely high or anything like that. So let's test the cathode, which is pin 8 of the 35L6, which should be... This looks like they've got a piece of resistive wire here. Should be this one right here. No problems. So the cathode of this tube is working okay. And the cathode directly tied to ground here. And same thing over here. So... Oh, we have the cathode here goes through a 100 ohm resistor. It was looking like it was here, but this is the cathode right here. So 100 ohms. And that would be this other side of where I have the ground attached. 1.1 volts, no problems there. So that resistor is working okay. And I don't need to tw test the uh, 12 SA7 because it is oscillating. You can hear this, right? Just crunchy sounding. So everything seems to be there. Very interesting. So one very strange thing is when I turn it up, here it's kind of crunchy there. As I turn it up louder, it clears up, which is a very odd thing. So I'm adjusting the volume control when this is happening. So let's take a look around the volume control here. So we have a 0 0.015 microfarad capacitor here, and that is the coupling cap, right? That couples to the... Uh, couples from the, the wiper of this to the grid, okay? And that would be this capacitor right here. So this is the wiper, and this is coupling to the grid. That looks like a 10 meg resistor there. And there it is, 10 meg, okay? So that's that coupling cap from there. And then off the wiper here, we have 220 picofarad, which would be this capacitor right here. And... It looks like there's a wire off of that as well. So it's a black wire. Let 
which is running over to this IF transformer right over here. It's an IF transformer right here. So this is the IF transformer. The black lead off of this IF transformer is supposed to attach to this end. It's not supposed to attach to the wiper. So you can see it's attached to the wiper, the center of the VR. It's supposed to attach to here. You can see we have a, a another 220 pico farad and a 2.2 meg resistor. So we have 220 pico farad or micro micro farad. And then we have our 2.2 meg resistor, and this is where that black lead from the transformer is supposed to attach to, right to the end. And they have it attached to here, so it looks like a wiring error. Now, I don't know if that's going to affect this too incredibly bad. Obviously, it will, right? It shouldn't be attached to the wiper, but I don't think it's going to be causing this grungy sound that we're getting. So there's a chance that when this capacitor was changed, maybe the person removed the wire from here and just dis disconnected it, you know, and attached it to the, reconnected it to the wrong area over here. That's uh, a possibility, or maybe even a factory wiring error. Yeah, that's very strange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the power off. I'll move this out of the way. Turn on my soldering iron. Let that warm up for a second. I guess I can just leave this here. Move this over here. So what I want to do is I'm just going to remove this lead and attach it up to here. So we'll see. Usually, see, this doesn't look like it's really been tampered with, this joint. It looks pretty factory. This, of course, has because somebody's changed this capacitor. So eh, there's a good chance. What I'm going to do is uh, just grab this here and move this. Grab it down there. Move this up. Move that away from there. Yeah, everything is kind of loose here, so things are just almost tacked in place. So this looks like this was originally going through the hole in the eyelet here of the potentiometer and it's not now so they've moved things around it looks like just the way that this little lead is aiming you know so you can kind of tell things have moved around just a little bit so let's put that in there I'm just gonna tack this into place like this and then what I'll do is move this up to the top like so just like that Okay, and see if that changes anything. Okay, so here we go. All right, I'll just leave that there. Just in case we want to take some measurements, I'll put that back. Here we go, turn it back on. Make sure the volume is down. Troubleshooting on the fly, let's see what happens here. Okay. It is still pretty crunchy. But it does seem like the volume control is acting a little bit better. So, well, at least that issue's fixed. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is see what's going on with the audio section here. So, what I'm going to do is probe this portion here with a signal tracer. So I'll turn on my signal tracer and I get the leads over here. So I'll remove this. Hopefully my signal tracer will be loud enough for the mic to pick it up. It's off to the side here. Okay, so put the signal tracer onto here just like so. Make sure the volume is down. That's very clean. So it's grungy here, but clean on the signal tracer off to the side here. Yeah, 
So the next thing I want to do is check the grid of the 35L6. So the grid of the 35L6 will be right over here. So what I'll do is I'll move this over here. And turn this up again. No problems. So the audio is nice and clear there as well. You hear how clear that is? So no problems there. Okay, so again. Okay, so let's go to the plate. Okay. Touch this onto the plate right there. It's very clear on the plate. So this is telling me, it's looking like so far, let's move this out of the way. It's looking like so far that it might actually be the speaker. The speaker might be shot on this. So it'll just move this over. And I'll turn this the other way around very carefully. This capacitor in here like so. It's not a metal can, so it can just sit like so. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'll just put this across the speaker here and we'll take a listen to the speaker and see what that sounds like. So it's definitely, definitely the speaker. The speaker's bad. So what I can do is I have my other test speaker. What I'm going to do is I'll grab my other test speaker and I'll just put an actual speaker right across this speaker and we'll take a listen to a different speaker and just absolutely verify that it is the uh, voice coil. All right, I've got my big ugly test speaker right here off to the side. You can see this big ugly test speaker, but it works very, very well. So I'll remove the signal tracer. Just shut that off. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely the speaker. So I don't know if you can hear how clear that is. Compared to... So definitely the speaker. The speaker is gone. So I wonder if I just move this. So no. No, it's really toast. So I don't know, maybe a short in the actual voice coil itself or something like that. So back with this speaker here. Let's just uh, cruise around the dial and see if I can... Maybe couple in a signal with my uh, antenna here. Sorry. 
set. I'm just starting to get back into it. And? I don't have endurance. I mean, I haven't played this book. Works very well. So, basically, one wiring error underneath and a bad speaker is really what's wrong with this radio. It's humming. You can hear, you know, the filter capacitors are definitely bad. You hear it? You know. So it is humming. You know, it's, that's to be expected. That capacitor is getting warm. But other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty much it's coming to life. So not bad for this little radio receiver. So it's a good chance that the last tech that was in here uh, did that wiring error. And then of course, um, who knows, maybe somebody had turned this up extremely loud for a long time and, and damaged the voice coil in the, uh, in the actual speaker. So when it comes time to restore this radio receiver, we'll go through and either disassemble the speaker and try and repair the speaker itself, or I'll just find a, a different electromagnetic speaker and and put it in this radio receiver. If you'd like to see the rebuild of a, an electromagnetic speaker, you can leave that in the comments below, and I'll consider doing that in the uh, restoration video for this radio as well. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.